When it comes to topics as contentious as the issue of free will, there are understandably a number of varying stances that people take when examining it through the lens of Steins Gate. Opinions on this tend to vary, with well-reasoned arguments coming from both the side of free will and the side of determinism, which, to put it very simply, is a school of thought that states that all human actions are the result of past causes and factors that led to those actions. But I think that a great deal of these arguments tend to dismiss some of the subtleties that make all the difference. This is quite a layered topic, and looking at it as black or white is the wrong way to go about it when the concept is pretty nuanced. The most accurate school of thought with regards to Steinsgate's take on free will and determinism is a sort of harmonious hybrid of both ideas. That Okabe does not have true free will, but simultaneously, determinism has not quite led him to lack ownership in his decisions. Strict, extreme determinism would state that Okabe has no will for his actions and that every behavior of his was the result of previous factors. It essentially dismisses responsibility for one's behavior. And this is clearly not the case because of how much narrative emphasis and weight is put on Okabe's decisions throughout. But at the same time, it is also true that on numerous occasions, the characters in the story allude to a lack of free will. In the midst of his struggle to save Mayuri from death, Okabe laments that the universe is preventing him from saving her, as if God has conspired against him so that no matter what he did, he would never be able to save her. However, this is not determinism that he is referring to here. The way that Mayuri dies no matter how Okabe varies the past is not at all consistent with classical determinism, which due to the innumerable alterations would have led to plausibility and possibility dictating that a number of his attempts would have been successful. Of course, every world line where Mayuri dies like this is within an attractor field, meaning that one could argue for determinism here and say that every possible scenario plays out under the umbrella of this attractor field before converging at Mayuri's death. But due to this convergence, there is no absurdism here, no randomness that would characterize true determinism. This inevitability is different. Okabe's helplessness here is instead about fatalism. Sometimes referred to as predeterminism, fatalism is the belief that all events, including human actions, are established and decided in advance. The belief that nothing can change these pre-established events. A very important concept to understand is the distinction between fatalism and determinism. Both have parallels in that they both say that our lives are dictated by forces beyond our control. But in contrast to determinism, fatalism is not about causation, but destiny in a sort of way. It states that we are bound to reach our ultimate fate no matter what. These fates are predetermined and set, and unaffected by cause. But the story categorically denies fatalism through the implementation of divergence from attractor fields. The idea that Okabe can alter these world lines enough to avoid undesirable events. This throws fatalism out the window, and the fact that Okabe only prescribed to it at the height of his misery strongly insinuates that this is an undesirable philosophy that should be overcome and dismissed. Now, as Kurisu alludes to here, it is clear that the series advocates for certain aspects of determinism. Peppered through the narrative are little allusions to people, decisions, and events being the result of previous factors. That all of the preceding events have led to the current situations. But what is important is that it does not become nihilistic and insinuate passivity. Okabe is the result of his past experiences, but he is still actively making decisions every step of the way. He chooses to save Mayuri because his will demanded it. He chooses to sacrifice Kurisu. Likewise, in alternate routes, he gives up because he makes a choice to lose hope. If the story truly believed that every action resulted only from cause and not from human choice, it would not have put so much gravitas on Okabe's guilt and the impact of his decisions after he made choices. However, oddly enough, one of the most iconic lines of the series would seem to advocate for either fatalism or classic determinism, depending on your point of view. This line would appear to imply that Steinsgate has chosen everything that has happened and that the beings of this world have no say in the matter. 
However, this wouldn't make sense since the story clearly rejects fatalism and doesn't buy into traditional determinism. We'll return to this issue later, so just keep it in the back of your mind. I think that a problem with the term free will is that it seems to hint at complete independency, when the truth is that this is never the case. If you make a decision in the moment, it is because of something in your past that has led you to think that way. There is no action that you take that is not dependent on something. That's just how it is. Our will in the moment is not ever independent of cause. In my opinion, for this debate, a better term for free will that would clear up some confusion would be personal agency. The ability of someone to take action. We are not completely free of influence, but this does not mean that we have no ability to act. Any decision that you make is inherently of your own volition, because you yourself are making that choice, but it results from factors and causes from your past. In Steins Gate, there is no spontaneous free will, and there is no nihilistic determinism. However, there is personal agency, and there is cause. Like I said, a nuanced hybrid of free will and determinism. But what does this mean thematically? Well, this is just the way of the world in Steins Gate. The narrative doesn't contain true, completely independent free will, but neither does it advocate a passive submission to fate. It emphasizes the capacity for action and how one can choose to progress. And here is the true significance of these ideas. Choice. We still have the ability to choose to press on when things get tough. And of course, we also have the ability to choose to give up. One of the darkest roots in the Steinsgate visual novel consists of an empty, hopeless Okabe mindlessly repeating the days leading up to Mayuri's death over and over again because he can't find a way to progress past them without losing someone dear to him. He eventually learns about every aspect of these days, so thoroughly that it becomes monotonous. He is a shell of a man, going through this cyclical world that he knows every detail about. Without a shred of humor, he unironically proclaims himself as the god of this looping mini-universe that he has created, with it being victim to his every whim since he can just leap back in time and start over again without changing anything. In a moment of unhinged insanity, Ogabe realizes that he can do anything in this closed loop and begins thinking unspeakable things. He ponders letting Daru get hit by a car. He even genuinely considers raping Suzuha. Eventually, he reverts back to passive hopelessness before resolving to travel back to the 70s with Suzuha to try and change things from there. And so, Okabe leaves with her, never to see his dear friends again. Evidently, the story does not shy away from some pretty morbid darkness, but it is because of how it dips into this darkness that its uplifting ascent in the conclusion is as palpable as it is. This is very clearly a bad ending. Apart from the resolution, which is depressing but manages to emphasize finding a way forward through choice, this is the clearly undesirable thematic antithesis to what the story is trying to say. Hopelessness, submission, defeat, no impact from Okabe's actions. At every turn, it frames fate and nihilistic determinism as thoroughly undesirable. Through this, the conclusive messages of the true ending of the narrative itself, and through Okabe's constant struggle to find the light, Steinsgate chastises these ideas and challenges the audience to strive for more. Not only is personal agency the concept that Steinsgate champions when it comes to the philosophical debate regarding free will, but the ability to act in the face of the seemingly inevitable is a major theme of the story. Maybe free will doesn't exist, but in a fictional universe that has world line after world line of infinite possibilities accessible by our main character, does it really need to, to show the importance of choosing to overcome the odds? Our decisions are constrained and framed by our past experiences, but we still have personal power. Everything has a cause, but in the moments that matter, genuine decisions are made. And so now, we can see that Okabe's happy fate was not just the choice of Steinsgate in a way that made him a passenger. It was the choice of a world line that he carved out for himself. When you choose to fight and push through, the world will reward you. Okabe admits during the story that this is the choice of Steinsgate is a phrase that is completely pointless, but I think that if he were to give it meaning by the end, it would be something similar to this. That's why Steinsgate is an inspiration to many. 
it uses the multiple world lines as not just a primary plot mechanic, but a metaphorical device to illustrate this theme, showing the sheer difficulty of struggling to reach the light in various contexts. In some world lines, it is impossible to save Mayuri. Hell, Okabe goes through hundreds of scenarios and in almost all of them, someone close to him dies. But to find an alternative to Mayuri's death, all he needed was the support of one other to get going again. And when it came to avoiding the death of his loved ones altogether, all it took was one other perspective. The smallest things can turn the tide and inspire action, and Steinsgate is saying this with regards to both the story and micro situations in life. Sometimes every single scenario within a desperate situation may feel like a path into the abyss. But Steinsgate, through its emphasis on personal agency, is saying that there is a way to transcend these tiny world lines within difficult situations of our lives to find a way through. It is immeasurably difficult to reach for the light when everything seems to cloud it out, but if you do, you can break through and achieve what never seemed possible. Sure, maybe a bunch of past factors landed you into a difficult situation, but there is always an alternative, that one way out that one world line, and there is always the option to choose to fight to find it. For those who can relate, it is an extremely meaningful concept tackled in an elaborate and metaphorical way, one that integrates some hefty philosophical concepts organically, and places them in secondary importance to the messages and heart of the work. And that is why the show is able to resonate with so many. Through this mechanism, it introduces the brutal dark, establishes the world as one that has led our main character into a tough spot, and uses the multi-world line theory to demonstrate that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. A theme that, while cliche, will always be relevant. Thank you very much for watching.